Moving on to the acoustic guitars in the chorus. We've got four acoustic guitar tracks. There's two highs and two lows, and each one of those pairs are panned left and right. They're basically just double tracked. So I've got the highs 50 to the left and 50 to the right, and the lows 28 to the left and 28 to the right. I wanted to keep them a little bit more in the middle of the mix because the electric guitars are a little bit wider here in the chorus. So let's take a listen to those acoustic guitars. Let's hear them with the rest of the track. Okay, so first off, they're all being routed to this acoustic guitar bus, which is ending up here at the stereo auxiliary channel. Now, if you take a look at each guitar track, you'll see that I compress them individually. Now, I wanted to do this because of the slight timing differences between each guitar. And then on the auxiliary bus, I chose to EQ them all together so the whole group would fit in the mix. And I also chose to compress the whole group to help glue them together. I use the LA-3A on each guitar, and I use this compressor a lot on guitars. It's got that faster attack with the variable release time, which is great on acoustics. I'm actually compressing them fairly heavy here because I want that rhythmic element of these guitars to be pulled up. So without the compression, the softer strums kind of get lost in the mix. It also helps the guitars cut through the mix by adding a little bit of attack without making them too loud. I'm also adding a little ping pong delay to the left channels for some additional movement. All right, let's move over to the bus and take a look at the EQ here. So first off, let me just bypass all the individual bands so we can go through each one. So first I pulled out the bass frequencies under 100, and in this case I chose 136. And that gives these acoustic guitars the right space to live without taking up energy from the bass guitar. Now there was a little muddiness around 200 that needed to come out. And I really like the EQ3 from Pro Tools for finding those problem frequencies. So if you pull the Q all the way up and then hold Shift Option and move that frequency knob, it momentarily turns this into a bandpass EQ so you can really zone in on your problem frequencies. There was a little woofiness here. There it is, and I wanted to pull that out. And next, I did the same thing with this boxiness here, with this mid-range frequency. So you can hear that kind of honkiness there. Now, there was a lot of high end on the strings in this guitar and it just kind of stuck out of the mix in a way I didn't really like. So I cut out a lot of the highs and then went in and pulled out a little bit more of that mid-range to give the vocals more room to sit in their own space. Next I compressed the group just a little bit. And this helps them sit right back in the mix where they're supposed to be. Then I gave them a little bit of room. And then some short plate. Now that short plate, again, is a smoother reverb than the room. And it's just a tab longer than the room. Next, we added a little bit of short delay, and let me pull these two off so you can hear it. So 
So once again, with a short delay, just like the electric guitars, it's going through this little slap delay. Uh, 64 and 59 milliseconds left and right. And those are panned to the opposite sides of the bus. So the left side is going to the right side of the delay, and the right side of the bus is going to the left side of the delay. This is that Haas effect, which helps add to the stereo feel and kind of tricks the listener into making things sound bigger than they really are. Let me put all the effects in here so you can hear what it sounds like with everything going on. We'll add the ping pong back in there. with the whole mix. All right, that's the acoustic guitars. In the next video, we're going to take a look at all the other supporting guitars.